Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Antoine Cairo. Um, I'm really glad to be invited today. I'm really sorry for a little late, uh, and a little way to have a little delayed. Uh, we, I did well my tech check yesterday, but yesterday was a little thing with my screen sharing. So you will have a little brief preview on my next slide. Um, and I will do my introduction today with my slide on edit mode. Nice to meet you, everybody. So um, today I'm here to speak about how to convince the world that your project is incredible. Um, I want to tell you that I think I'm one of the speakers that today will not share some uh, Unity screens or a Unity um, capture of the, the engine. I will try to, to, uh, to talk to you about broad stuff and mostly how to convince an audience and in other words, how to pitch a project. So first, to introduce myself a little bit more. Uh, my name is Antoine. I'm on the photo, the small guy, of course, not the big one. And I'm the co-founder of a company called Atlas 5. Atlas 5 is an audiovisual production company that is specialized in doing immersive narrative content. So we all think that video game is a big part of the field. It's immersive. But what we are doing today at Atlas is trying to bring immersive content into the narrative field in VR headset. So a lot of things that we did in the past uh, includes a few titles like Spheres, Ayahuasca, that I will talk briefly today, Vestige, and more recently, Gloomy Eyes. So what we're doing mostly is to tell narrative story with game engine to bring that to the immersive world. I think that I work mostly with Unity on a lot of projects, and I think why Unity decided to invite me today to speak a little bit to you about how to convince an audience is because I'm doing a lot of international co-production, and I need every day to convince a lot of people to come on board of different projects that we are doing. So what I will try to do today is to give you a little bit of tips on how to try to convince an audience. Of course, there is no rules. Um, you know, everything is made, every rule is made to be broke. And what I give to you today is some tips that really often might work. I'm not saying all the time. So I'll try to say to have three parts today. And the first part of what I will want to bring to, do, to you today is triviality. Um, a lot of what I will say right now on the next few minutes is stuff that you already know, and I know you already know that, but sometimes it's important that someone remind that to you, refresh your memory on the really key basis on how to convince the audience that your project is incredible. I think the first thing is convince the world that your project is incredible because it is true. What I want to mean by this slide is if you are not convinced as a director, as a script writer, as a game designer, as a producer, if you're not convinced that your project is incredible, then it will be almost impossible for you to convince other people that your project is incredible. That may seem really trivial. It is trivial, but it is really something to keep in mind. Um, as a producer, you've been pitched a lot of projects. As a creator, there is a lot of projects that you want to do. There is a lot of story to tell. And how to choose which one to tell. And often, really often, because by fear of missing out, we're taking projects that deeply we know is not the project we're supposed to do. And I think the first phase before convincing the world is to try to convince yourself that the project you need to spend one year, two years, three years to focus on. Because we all know that what we're doing is taking time. It's taking a lot of time to create a world, to create character, to create empathy. And the first people to convince is yourself. So my first advice at Triviality will be choose really well your project. Don't jump too far on a project. Try to really ask yourself the good question that people will ask you later when you'll have to pitch them. So convince them because it's true, because you know that's a great project. Then, of course, something that is one of the most easy things to say, and I'm sorry that my GIF is not working. It should be a little bit more funny, but you get the spirit. Speak slowly. It's really something important that a lot of the time when you will have to convince people, you will feel a little rush. You, you will feel a little stress on, on the moment. And you might suddenly start to talk too fast. Of course, it's really normal to be stressed. You're stressed before a pitch. You're stressed before a panel. You're stressed before a first date. But you try to control yourself and not to shout to the people in front. 
So it's really important to speak slowly and to be really, really intelligible when you have discussion and pitch in front of an audience, in front of a person. That will be another triviality, but really, believe me, a lot of people pitch me project almost every day. And I see this happening a lot. Like, people don't know the project already. And people are not in your head when you speak a project. So they need a little bit of time to digest what you're saying, integrate the information. And that's not something that is so easy to do when you're being pitched all the time. You know, your mind might be a little bit elsewhere. You, two minutes before you were focused on another email. So you need to process every information that people are telling you. So you need people to stop slowly when they talk to you. So that will be something else, like talk slowly, but be sure of what you're saying. You know, it's like insist on some words. The forms of what you're saying, sometimes when the pitch is really fast and short, may be as important as what you are saying on the first encounter. So that's something important, you know, like speak slowly, be sure of what you're saying, and get to the point fast. Fast, not not meaning speak fast, speak slowly, but go there fast. Don't use a lot of words because time of the people is precious. So that's a few triviality that I want to bring. And I'll finish by the last one before answering a few tips that I might give you today. Another thing, and people really forget that a lot, is to introduce yourself. Um, it's really awkward when somebody talks to you and you don't even know who is talking to you. Uh, of course, the project you will speak about is important, but the project cannot be important as much as the people that is bringing the project to your intention. And even if you have only one minute to introduce a project to somebody, take 20 seconds to speak about yourself. And goal of that is to try to bring the people on the good road of the project, because of course, we are not on one thing. All of us, we are a lot of things, and we will not introduce our, ourselves in the same manners in front of different people. What you want to do on introducing yourself before pitching a project you have in mind is introducing yourself with the goal to show that you're the best person to do the project you are about to talk about. So people need to understand after that, oh, yeah, he introduced himself before. And now I understand why it makes, what it's important that this guy is making this project. So I think that's something not to forget. Introduce yourself in a way that will make the person confident to trust you with the project you will talk about in a few minutes. So that's a bit of triviality that I, I want to bring to your attention. And time fly fast, time go fast. We'll not enter the some part of uh, the little keynote of today. So the name of the keynote is Convince the World that Your Project is Incredible. So know that you know your project is incredible because you choose it carefully. What is the world? The world is not always the same kind of audience you have in front of you. So I think something important is to define the world you will talk to, and you will have a lot of different occasions to pitch a project and to try to convince an audience. I've tried when I prepared this keynote to summarize into three different groups of pitch and of impossibility of pitching. The first one will be the short and improvised meeting. You know, it's what we call mostly an elevator pitch. And that will happen to you a lot of time. It's like you're in a festival, you need to grab someone and to pitch the project really fast, and you need to improvise the pitch you're going to make, meaning that you're not prepared to make the pitch, and the person that you will talk to is not prepared to receive the pitch. So that's a hard moment. Um, that's not the most easiest to try to convince the world that your project is incredible. On this kind of moment, I think you should focus on trying to convince the person that your project is good enough to have a proper meeting and to give you this contact. Because let's face it, you cannot in two minutes convince an investor to give you money. You, can, you cannot in two minutes convince, uh, convince Unity to be on board as a funder or a director to come on board of your project or even a producer to come in your co-production. So what we need to, what you need to do, and you know that the world of pitching is short and improvised, is you need to have a proper meeting later. Um, best case scenario, sending a, a deck before, sending a file before, so the, the person can read and digest the project before receiving you. 
And I think defining the world of who you're pitching, who you're trying to convince, define different kinds of goals. So first thing, short and improvise the goal, have a proper meeting. And that's thing um, that if you only focus on that and you don't, you don't finish this two minute meetings by I'm looking for $5 million, then you might have more chance to have a proper meeting and then finally sell, we'll say what you really want. Another thing to pitch is in front of an audience. So I think you all know as creator, director, producer, that sometimes we're inviting to pitch in session and we're coming on stage. A lot of people are in front of us. Um, you don't know exactly who you need to convince in the room because you don't know the face, you don't even know the name, you don't know the job title. Uh, so that's something, a different exercise. Usually you have a little bit more of time than the short and improvise that we talked about. Uh, usually you have more five to 10 minutes and you have a Q&A at the end that is really important and crucial because then you can target which people might be interested by your project. So when you're in front of the audience, uh, the goal for me is a little bit similar of the goal um, of the first speech, uh, of the first kind of world we were defined, is you need to organize the plan and longer meeting. The goal into this kind of moment is the same as before. Um, you need to have a face-to-face -face with somebody. You need to have a face-to-face -face in order then to be able to try to convince them that you have the best project in the world and then to ask them what you really want to do. So the last one, um, and that's for me the crucial moment when you're with somebody, is the planned and longer meeting. That's where you will really be able to convince that your project is incredible. And that's where you will transform all this meeting. Usually you take a different kind of meeting to to resign something. And that's after this kind of meeting that then you'll have a clear answer of are the people interested in joining your project or not? Did you convince this person that your project is incredible or not? And if you fail, and it will happen a lot of time, that's the rules of engagement we are all in, that's not a problem because you know your project is incredible. So you don't lose faith and you look to the next meeting. So I think we went to the trivialities and to defining the world you're pitching to, the world you need to convince. Um, and that's the two first part. Now I will try to be really practical <clears throat> and to give you first tip, a few tips that I'll try to apply to myself usually. So tips and example. The first thing um, I want to say is, so remember three time of world, short improvise, audience, proper meeting. For the improvise and the audience thing, when you don't have a lot of time, when you're either a little bit stressed and improvising or in front of an audience and you prepare, what I really advise to you is don't speak too much about your story. You need to make people curious. You need to make people so curious that they want to talk to you more. And speaking about the story, you know, I don't want to be the party pooper, but Almost every story are the same. I don't know if you know this book, which is 20 master plots and how to build them. If you don't know these books, I really, um, that's a book I really recommend. And I know a lot of creators usually say, no, my story won't be in these 20 plots, but read the book. And if you find a story that's not in these 20 plots, then honestly, well done, because I've challenged a lot of people to try that and nobody never succeed. So what I mean by that is, don't focus too much on your story. A little bit, the story will always be a little bit the same. And the people that you're pitching to, the people that you try to convince, they heard these stories a lot and a lot of times. What they want to know is, are you a good person to do it? In which way your story is original and different than the other story that they, like a rescue or escape plot that they've read 25 times. And if you focus too much on the story, First, you might lose yourself into details. That happens a lot when people pitch to me. And secondly, you might be a little bit boring for the people in front of you. Hello. I'm so sorry for all these technical um, challenges. Here I am back. What I want to say briefly, and I try to go fast so I can keep a, a few uh, question and answer after. I was saying don't insist too much on the story and try to build the curiosity. I was giving the example of Vestige, which is a project about grief, 
but a woman who lost her husband and went to different stages of grief. And instead of going too much into the detail of the story, what I did on the last, last on the live pitching session was like asking the audience to close their eyes for three minutes. And I, I had only five minutes of pitching time. But on these five minutes, I asked the whole audience to close their eyes for three minutes and for three minutes to try to remember soft memory of someone they love and lost. And I let them think about that. And when they reopened the eyes, um, the, then I had two more minutes to pitch. I told them, you'll see all the kind of memories you had, the fact that the memories can be blurry and you don't even know if it's a real memory or something you reconstruct. That's what we're trying to do with Vestige. It's trying to reconstruct how your brain remember memories of grief. And in a way, it was more impactful than like, trying the real, the real story of this amazing woman, because in five minutes in front of an audience, these people are hearing a lot of pitch in 10 minutes. I, the only thing I needed was to grab their attention. I'll try to go fast then to like keep a little bit of time. So ayahuasca is a piece that I did that is based on ayahuasca. And same, instead of trying to explain that you will live a journey around ayahuasca, you will grow to snake, blah, 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 and to give every scene. What I did was asking only two simple questions to people. First, is there some people in the room who took ayahuasca? A lot of people, usually 10 to 20% say yes. And then the main thing was like, um, would you want some time to take some ayahuasca without the side effect to go faster into the journey? not waiting for the answer because you cannot have this back and forth. And to the other side of the people who haven't took ayahuasca, would you love to try without any side effect to see if that's something that might please you? And instead of going into the storytelling, to the scenes of the project, I was more trying to build the curiosity of these people to try to get proper meeting later to really pitch the project and then say would they or why they were supposed to come on board the project. So a last few tips um, to, go, to go is same thing, be original, build a curiosity. Remember that these people are hearing a lot of stories every day um, and you need to convince them that yours is different. So if I go to go faster on a few slides, something really important is when you're finished to convince the world that your project is incredible, ask for something, ask something that you really want. Uh, these people cannot read your mind, you know, they need to really know what you really want. And if you're not asking, how should they know? You know, and not, a lot of, not everybody is looking for money. Not everybody is looking for a co-production. You need to find something that you really want from the people you're targeting, you know, and that's also defining the world. When you have this one-to-one -one meeting and you go in detail on the project, then you need to precisely ask when you need for this person. Another thing is, and I tell that a lot of time, you will have negative answers on what you're asking. A lot of time, you'll have the feeling that the people is not inclined to say yes to what you're asking. And something that I really urge you to do is never leave a meeting with nothing. If somebody is not inclined to answer positively to what you're asking, he had a little feeling of that he owes you. People are not happy to say no to someone trying to convince them to come on board. So usually when you have the feeling that someone is not really convinced by your project and will say no finally to what you're asking, try to live with something. A contact from a similar partner, a contact from a, con uh, a concurrent of the guy that might be interesting. Always live with a little something. And then your time won't be lost and these people will have the feeling at the end that he helped you a little bit. And he will be less disappointed than giving you only a proper negative uh, answer. The last thing is uh, remember just after every every meeting and every people you're talking to, to send a one pager just after. Don't send a deck that is too long. Don't send that something that is too long to read because the people is not yet on the green light process of your project, but send a material that is something that he can have in this email on the day of his computer. So we'll remember the fact that he's met you and that he need to bring an answer to your attention. I think that's the last tips uh, I want to bring to your attention. 
If you have a question for me later, because we'll have only a few minutes there for Q&A, uh, again, sorry for the technical um, little details, but you have my email. Please feel free to write to me. I'll take a little bit of time to reply, but I always do. So I'll go back to full screen and I'll see you really soon. So Michaela, uh, we are based in Amsterdam. I had pretty good experience. So I think it was a really decent market. I, I went only once, so I cannot make a generality about that, but I had a, I had a good memories of that. And I remember that uh, a lot of real buyers were, went there. So people that really was able to, to invest or to really listen to your project. So yes, yes, that's a market I will, re I will recommend for sure. My favorite experience of 2021. Wow, that's a tough one. Uh, you put me on the spot, Alana. Um, and I cannot reply one of my own. Uh, I'll put that later on Twitter. Uh, what are the XR companies? Where? So what are the XR companies? So I think when you're looking for a co-production, it's important to try to co-produce with other country. And I think uh, it's good to find great partners in different country. Uh, I will say uh, on the UK, No Ghost is an amazing studio. NC Creative is also really, really strong. Um, I'm starting right now. Uh, yeah, in in Taiwan, Moonshine Studio is a great studio, and Serendipity Picture. If you're looking to co-produce uh, with Taiwan, um, there is a lot in different country, um, right? And usually, what you can do is ask. The, the national funding of the country, what he'll recommend, and he will recommend you to the best people. I think I'm out of time. Thank you so much.